Hi everyone, welcome to my video on authenticating SFDX using JWT. So in this tutorial, we'll be focusing more on how we can set up the OpenSSL and set up the connector app with the certificate required. And then we'll move on how we can run the SFDX commands. And we'll see like how the Salesforce org will get authenticated, authenticated using the JWT command. So Without wasting time, let's set up the OpenSSL, which is really uh, tricky because the OpenSSL binaries are very difficult to get. So let's go to the OpenSSL website, which is shared in my blog. And you can see uh, this is Shining Light Productions, so they provide the binary for you. And uh, there is this uh, two AXE files. So we have to download the second one, which is not the light version. I'll explain why it is required uh, later in this video. So you have to download the uh, Windows 64 OpenSSL version 1.1.1D, which is available right now, the 43MB one. Just uh, download it. So I have already installed it. Let's set up uh, if I have the setup ready in my system. So just on my command prompt line, uh, we have to type OpenSSL and you can see uh, it's not recognized. So basically I have installed it, but still it's not working. So the reason is uh, the path variables are not set. So for that reason, what I need to do is like I need to open uh, my computer and in there we have to basically see the environmental variables yeah. so this is how you set up uh, the environmental variables uh, in this case uh, I'm setting open SSL conf and uh, what I need to do is uh, I need to pop Put the path where I have installed the open SSL so that's in C program files and then uh, scrolling down I can see open SSL Windows 64 and in the bin folder I can see this open SSL CFG so this file will not be available on light version and with this file uh, we have to set up the path variables or the environment variable so just uh, I'll use this particular uh, location to set up the variable value for that path and then uh, slash open SSL dot CFG. Oops. Uh, yeah. So that's what I need to do. Copy that file name and then I need to paste it uh, when I define the environmental variables. Yeah. So now you can click on OK. And then what you need to do is you also have to. So this is a system variable which we have set and also you need to set up the path variable. So here, as you can see, the path variable, uh, we mostly use it for uh, AND, uh, GATE, Java. So some applications, we, we have to define the path variable in the windows. So similarly, we need to set up path variable for uh, our OpenSSL. So that's basically like uh, the bin folder. You have to put it there. And yeah, click OK, OK, close this, close all the tabs, uh, which is not really required. And then if I go to command prompt and OpenSSL, you can see it prompted me to the OpenSSL command so this is not really required in this purpose because we will be running the open SSL command directly from the command line so I'll close this and open a new instance of uh, command line so yeah CMD okay and then uh, I need to make a directory right so as per the blog I have mentioned that we need to create a directory where all the certificates once generated will be saved so here I'll create a new directory uh, which is by the name uh, JWT I'll be using that so mkdir jwt so it creates uh, a jwt folder in my c drive and then i'll navigate to that drive and then start giving that commands uh, open ssl generation commands one after the other so for that i need to be on my blog so salesforcelm.com and then i have uh, authenticators of dx using jwt and you can see yeah so these are the commands open ssl commands so the first one so it actually created a passphrase and then using that passphrase which is in this case is password it will generate the key file so this is the key file with which the certificate will be authenticated so once it is there yeah so you can see like uh, writing rsa key so the key got uh, created in the text file and then we need to run the second set of commands so at this point the different details or the uh, most important details to generate a certificate is asked so we can enter like uh, the country name uh, the state name city name so this uh, as per your location or as per your requirement you can create it so as i said this is a self-signed certificate it's not a ca signed certificate 
So self-signed certificate is not really secured for to be used in a production instance. Yeah, so we actually has to generate a CSI certificate for production regions and uh, that would be provided by your client or your uh, company. They can provide you along with the key. So in this case, yeah, so I'm entering the details. Uh, they are asking for a challenge password. So I gave it as password one, two, three. Optional company name, uh, it doesn't matter much. So I, I just gave the same thing again, SRBC Realm. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now uh, the certificate in the C drive uh, would have generated. So let's go and check there, C, JWT. Yeah, you can see the key file and uh, it was generated. And then now, now we need to run the fourth command and that will generate the certificate. So certificate is of the type .crt using the server.csr file and server.key file it got generated. So you can see all the details are there. And now what you need to do is you have to use these two files when you set up the connected app. So that's that's the part where uh, using OpenSSL you create a certificate. Now let's uh, head on to uh, Salesforce to create a connected app. So that's the next step in this tutorial. So let's log into Salesforce, go to App Manager. Yeah, over here uh, in the App Manager, we can create a new connected app. So I have already set up uh, another app, uh, DevOps JWT, which I'll be using uh, for the purpose uh, on, on my actual setup. Uh, but for the purpose of this demo, I'll create a new connected app. So click on new connected app and provide the required details. Uh, so you can provide a app name, API name, company name, email. And then like the yeah, this is the most important part where you have to enable the OAuth setting and then uh, use digital certificate and upload the certificate which you just created in the previous step. So server.crt. Yeah. And then uh, the next step is to set up the OAuth scopes. So you need to select uh, three OAuth scope so one is API and the next one is open ID, I think, uh, no, it's uh, web based. Yeah. And then uh, you need to basically provide the next one, which is refresh token and offline access. So these three OAuth scopes you have to enter and then save it. And then what you need to do is basically, uh, yeah. So once this is set up, you need to manage it to edit the policies. So in the click on edit policies and you'll be uh, getting this particular page. So in here, what you need to do is you need to select uh, in the permitted users, admin approved users are pre-authorized. So I have selected it already. So this is the default one and you need to change it to admin approved users. So this way only uh, some particular profiles or some particular set of users you can manage for OAuth access using JWT. So all set, save, the connect app is created and uh, Yep, so the connect app is created. You can see JWT auth connected app. And then let's view it once again to see the consumer key. Yeah, so this is the consumer key. It's pretty uh, important or it, it's, it should be like stored in a secure location. You should not be sharing this consumer key and the certificate uh, key file as well because that, that can open up access to your org. So this is very important. For the purpose of demo, I'm just revealing it here. Uh, yeah, so you basically has to, uh, we'll be using this consumer key later when we run the SFDX steps. You can see that digital certificate also there. So the next step is to uh, check uh, if the SFDX commands works from the command line using this consumer key and the server.key file and the certificate which we created. So let's run and see what happens. So I'll open up a notepad so that I can edit that parameters. So the username will be changed and the consumer key will be changed. And then I'm copying it, paste it on my command line. Okay, user is not admin approved to access this app. Yeah, so as I said, like we mentioned that uh, only admin approved users can access. So here basically uh, the profile for this user is system admin and it's not been uh, authorized or we haven't ad added that profile for this connect app. So these are like some general setup you all might, already might be knowing it. So I'm not going into details uh, why it is happening and all. So you just have to add the profile. In this case, it's a system admin user profile. And click on save button. And so the user is added now, system admin user. So let's go back to the command line and run the same command once again. Hit enter. 
yeah so you can see successfully authorized username with org id the id of that org which i am using so that's it so that's how you use uh, jwt token and sfdx to connect to salesforce and sfdx being a powerful tool it can uh, do a lot of things from the back end like uh, deployments data queries and few other stuff so let's see like uh, what is this uh, auth command we used so sfdx force auth jwt grant is the command the sfdx command we use and uh, you can see these are the parameters which is uh, available for use with the sfdx command the client id is the one which we use uh, as the consumer key and then instance urls login for uh, production and test for uh, sandbox regions yeah so a uh, few of the other setup is basically like dev hub username default username so basically you might have seen a lot of videos with these details uh, but it's not really required to have all this so you don't have to set an alias as well so the next command you just have to pass the username same username if you're not setting up that so let's try uh, some other command uh, probably like we'll run one more command and see uh, things are get working fine so let's see a data command which is nothing but uh, an sql query so that's the sfdx uh, query command and then what you need to do is uh, copy that select id comma name from account that's the command i used or query i used and then run it against uh, the command line and you can see this are the results and this is how you automate task without any manual intervention and uh, this is how like sfdx can be useful to connect using backend or command line tools thanks for watching the video please provide any comments if you have anything on my blog thanks for watching again